and I find myself between two mountains of bounties and ni'mah. Between two huge bounties, لا أدري أيتهما أفضل. I don't know which one of the two is greater. Listen what he says further. He says, ذنوب قد سترها الله. ذنوب قد سترها الله. فَلَمْ يَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ يُعَايِرَنِي بِهَا أَحَدٌ مِّنْ خَلْقِ I find myself waking up this morning where I had greeted my colleagues and my family members where I went to work and I met the people that I work with or I got onto a train or onto a bus and I greeted people and people smiled at me and we greeted each other and they have no knowledge of the mountain of shortcomings and weaknesses or sins that I may have committed that night. And how come they don't have any knowledge of this? Because it is Allah's favor upon me that Allah has concealed these shortcomings and weaknesses. And then he says the second thing, وَمَوَدَّةٌ أَلْقَاهَا فِي قُلُوبِ الْعِبَادِ لَا يَبْلُغُهَا عَمَلِي And in spite of all of those weaknesses and shortcomings that I have, I greeted my family and they hugged me. I greeted my colleagues and they smiled at me and they put their hand out to me. And they still showed love and compassion towards me. وَمَوَدَّةٌ أَلْقَاهَا فِي قُلُوبِ الْعِبَادِ And Allah had put still in human beings' hearts, those that I have come in contact with, they still had the time to smile and be happy to see me. Imagine I've got all of these shortcomings. Yet Allah allows insan, human beings, my family, my friends to smile and to be happy with me. Who of us has time now to complain of the bad night of sleep that I may have had or the restless night I may have had Think, Ya Bna Adam, Balagat Zunubuka, Anana Sama. Our shortcomings have reached and have polluted everything around us. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still giving us from His treasures Jalla Jalaluhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding, inshaAllah. One of these scholars, under this very same topic, he says, this was amazing, so I said, let me share this with you, because we complain all the time. He says that, this was Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, لو رزق العبد الدنيا وما فيها And, if a person is given the dunya in this world, in whatever it contains, and you are given the opportunity to once again see the sun rise and say Alhamdulillah. Then he says, لَكَانَ إِلْهَامُ اللَّهِ لَهُ بِالْحَمْدِ أَعْظَمُ نِعْمَهُ مِنْ إِعْطَاهِهِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا لِأَنَّ نَعِيمَ الدُّنْيَا يَزُول وَثَوَابُ الْذِكْرِ وَثَوَابُ الْحَمْدِ تَبْقَى إِلَى الْآخِرَةِ He says because this dunya is going to come to an end. But that one subhanallah, that one alhamdulillah, you will see the nur and the beauty of that in your grave and in the akhirah. May Allah make us from those who remember Allah at every juncture, inshaAllah. Really, this is a simple message. This is enough for us to take home today. That let's be from those who does self-assessment. What is my condition? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy, inshaAllah. 
Imagine this day of Yawm al-Jum'ah. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are told that there is a moment on this day when your du'as are accepted. Authentic a hadith. Subhanallah. If I told you that guaranteed price of property is going up if you bought such and such area, I am guaranteeing you that. And you know, I've got experience in the market. Revelation has come. We need to listen. If I told you invest and do this and do that and this is where your success is, ask me, I know. Study this and study that and your job opportunities are better in this and better in that. I have got experience. And you know I've got experience. MashaAllah, we grab that, experience, that opportunity to listen to those advices. There are books. How to become a millionaire. The best investments and this and that. Alhamdulillah. But just imagine Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us there is a time on this day when you raise your hands and you make dua to Allah and Allah guarantees acceptance for that dua. What more guarantee do we need if Allah is accepting our duas? May Allah grant us that we make such duas and those moments are moments of acceptance and our duas are accepted on behalf of ourselves, our parents, our friends and our community and the ummah at large insha'Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these months and these days and the month of Sha'ban as we have heard, mashaAllah, they say that when the 15th of Sha'ban comes, it is just like the time before the dawn. And if a person does not wake up in time, then what happens is, by the time you know it, the sun has risen and you have missed your salah. So this 15th of Sha'ban, when it hits, it is a reminder that the darkness of the night is leaving us because you can see some light in the horizon and that light is the noor of the month of Ramadan that is coming to dispel and take away the darkness of the previous 11 months. One of the scholars said that this 15th when it hits, it is a reminder to say that listen, you have your boarding card in your hand. You have your boarding pass in your hand. The announcement has been made, boarding has begun. You wake up and you get to the gate or you miss the flight. So the first lesson we take from these moments on is that we have got life which is at boarding pass. Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us that opportunity. So wait and be alert. Wait and be alert. Because an announcement is soon to be made, final boarding. We need to hop on. And be on the charted flight. To take us to Jannah, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding, inshaAllah. They say the excitement when the month of Ramadan is to come, it should be, and perhaps this example doesn't apply anymore. Like in the old days when kids were playing outside, and a plane was flying over, and they got so excited, and they're looking, and wow, here's this plane flying so low, and they're all excited, and they stop playing, and everyone's looking at this plane fly over, and they're like, like overly excited. You need that excitement. But I think this example doesn't work because where do kids stand outside and play anymore to see whether the plane is flying or not? I was sitting and listening to the kids and it's like, come on guys, we've got to go. Like, just wait, I'm going to die if I stop now. It's like, wait, what's happening? Wait, where's, can you see the angel of death? No, I'm playing my game. It's like, it's like, like death is there with me. 
Where excitement we need to be excited. That the month of Ramadan is coming. And we need to create excitement in our homes. Wallah, it has become sad that we've almost made it such that Ramadan to our family and to the kids, it's a burdensome month. Na'udhu billah, Allahumma hafazna. Like we, we, we can start like complaining almost, like oh you know we're going to be sleeping less and we have to pray longer and we have to wake up early and this and that. Create excitement. Because it's not just the excitement for you and I. It's the excitement for these youth living in these societies where, wherein there is no excitement outside besides that what we create for them as a community. What we create for them as a family. So create that excitement insha'Allah al-Aziz. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhi says that the individual who has been given four qualities, that person has been given the greatest of gifts. And what is that? The first one is to have a grateful heart. The second one is to have a tongue that is remembering Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. To have a body which is always alert to the fact that am I using my limbs correctly and if some difficulty comes to me am I from the sabirin or not and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us pious partners these are great ni'mas may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us such hearts and tongues and partners inshallah and we have to start preparing from now Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an. He used to say that I start preparing for the month of Ramadan by forgiving and cleansing my heart of any hatred or ill feelings that I may have for anyone. Subhanallah. What's going on internally? Imagine we stand in Medina Munawwara. And we are happy to stand in front of alayhi salatu was salam. And we are there crying like babies. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Rasool Allah. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Habib Allah. As salatu was salamu alayka ya khayra khalqillah. As shafa'a ya Rasool Allah. As shafa'a ya Rasool Allah. Oh Allah, grant us to be from those who will be fortunate to have the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Yawmul Qiyamah. And we all are crying and asking for this and begging for it. Oh Allah, we want to pass away in Medina. Oh Allah, grant us the intercession of alayhi salatu was salam. But we don't have it in our hearts to intercede for each other. We don't have it in our hearts to forgive each other. We don't have it in our hearts to overlook the faults of each other. We stand at the Kaaba al-Musharrafah and we make the wafa of the Kaaba al-Musharrafah. But we just going and doing rituals. Look at that Kaaba, look at that Haram, look and visualize and picture alayhi salatu was salam being kicked out of that land of his, being kicked out persecuted, abused, hurt by his family members, chased away from this most beautiful Kaaba, which we die to go to. May Allah take us there, inshallah. But understand, it's not just going there. Those lessons have to come into our lives. What did Alayhi Salatu Wasalam do? Eventually, when he managed to come back, just like Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam forgave his people. La Do you think that I have been hurt worse than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been? Do you think that my little argument with a family member, with a person in my community is worse then what Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam had went through? So that gives me a right for Shaaban to come and go, for Ramadan to come and go. It gives me a right to stand in front of alayhi salatu was salam and ask for intercession. It gives me the right to still go to Haramayn al-Sharifayn. 
Yet feeling proud that I have got the right to feel this hurt because you know what you have done to me. We are fooling ourselves. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an, the Sahaba mentioned as well, Anas bin Malik radiallahu an, he's the narrator of this incident, wherein Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam says, the person who is going to enter, that person is from Ahlul Jannah. Sahaba wait, and they see a person from the Ansar entering. He sits down, and the next day, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam says, the person who will enter is from the Ahlul Jannah. That very same person comes, and then the third day alayhi salatu wasalam says, the the person opened for three, three nights I observed this person's and this person slept entire night no tahajjud no qiyamul layl this person slept the entire night and what happens the third day now when he is leaving he tells that person, I have to tell you, I lied to you. There is no such thing of me having a problem with my family. The actual issue is, alayhi salatu wasalam had given some glad tidings of a person being from Ahlul Jannah who will enter. And you were the person who entered for three days. And so I followed you to stay in your home, to see what great extraordinary things you are doing here in your home. And you came, and at night after Isha, you went to bed and you slept. As if though to say, I woke up for tahajjud, perhaps I made more ibadah than you. How come you from the Ahlul Jannah? What action are you doing that I can't see? The person said, you saw my life, that is my life. But there's one thing maybe that's coming to my mind, is that when I retire to bed, each day and each night, I ask Allah, I don't want hatred or animosity for anyone in my heart. I remove it and I forgive each person. That could be the reason. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the Ahlul Jannah, inshaAllah. Brothers and friends, the deadly disease of our society, it is not cancer. It is this hatred and animosity and jealousy. Where we think we are better than the next. My culture is better than the next culture. My affluence is better than the next. My imam is better than the next. My fatwa is better than the next. Where are we going to? Where are we going to? Like one of these scholars said, every group is claiming to say that we are correct. So if everyone else is wrong, who is going to Jannah? So who is going to Jannah? If everybody is wrong, and that means they are not going to, to, to think paradise. So who is going? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed akhlaq to this ummah. And that akhlaq started off with love. When there is love in the heart, then inshallah this hatred and animosity and pride will leave us. Because al-hasad ta'kulul hasanat, كَمَا يَأْكُلُ النَّارُ الْحَطَبُ Just like fire eats and devours wood. Just like termites. Maybe that's a better idea and a better example. Fire perhaps we can see and we see this wood burning. But we all think my heart is clean. You look at this wall and you think, MashaAllah, this is all beautiful. But inside... It's being eaten up. We need to check the walls of our hearts. We need to check the walls of our hearts. Are there termites in there or not? Are those termites eating our hasanat or not? How is it that we make all of these sadaqah and tahajjur and all of this, but we still come to the masjid thinking I am better than the next? Thinking that my culture is better than the next? Having this, 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 this tinge, Ali Salatu Wasalam said, in you, there is still that, 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 that uh, 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 odor and that smell 
of the people of Jahiliya. What was that? It was hatred and, 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 and animosity and jealousy. So this disease is eating us. The Hadith Sharif says, Man ahabba ay yabsuta lahu fi rizqihi wa yunsa'a lahu fi atharihi fal yasil rahimah. Allahu Akbar. We all want exactly this. Man ahabba ay yabsuta lahu fi rizqihi. Tell me brothers, who wants Allah to give them increased sustenance in their risk? We all want it, yes or no? Yes or no? Amin, inshaAllah. Man ahabba an yabsuta lahu fi rizqihi wa yunsa'a lahu fi atharihi Who wants to have a decent lifespan to be able to use these bounties? All of us, yes or no? Wa yunsa'a lahu fi atharihi Man ahabba an yabsuta lahu fi rizqihi wa yunsa'a lahu fi atharihi So what must you do? Have omega-3 every day? Have vitamin C? Alayhi salatu wassalam said, if you want that to happen, فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِمَةً Join ties with your family members. Join ties with your family members. And I extend it to join ties with each other. We are all family sitting in this multicultural society. We are all brothers and sisters because many of us don't have our immediate families. We are the families. So I leave you with that first message, don't complain every morning. Let's be from those who think rather, Allah has concealed my faults. Be thankful and be grateful to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Be prepared and let's try to be enthusiastic about the month of Ramadan. Create a buzz in our home of love for the month of Ramadan. And let's take out these traces of jahiliyyah, of hatred, racism, animosity from our hearts. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in our communities and grant us baraka insha'Allah and grant us to be from those who are from the Ahlul Jannah. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.